Today I'm talking about fractal noise inside of Adobe After Effects. Now I'm going to be recreating this animation of this spaceship flying to Earth. It's kind of a POV from the cockpit. I'm going to be using fractal noise for three specific things in this particular project. I'm going to be simulating elements, I'm going to be creating displacement maps to do glitch animations, and I'm going to be adding texture. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm going to break it down step by step, so let's get into it. I'm here inside of Adobe After Effects and I've set up my 1920 by 1080 comp and I have three HUD elements here that I'm going to start out with. I downloaded these from Shutterstock.com. If you want to check them out, just follow the link in the video description. Now while all these animations are cool as standalone clips, they don't really make a scene. So I'm going to be using fractal noise to really bring everything together. For the first step, I'm going to use fractal noise to simulate two particular things. First, I'm going to create a star field and then I'm going to create that star streak tunnel. So I'm going to go to layer and select new solid and first let's focus on the star field. So I'm going to name this star field, make sure that it's comp size and the color really doesn't matter. And now I'm going to go over to the effects and presets panel and I'm going to type in fractal noise. You'll find it under the noise and grain subfolder. Now I can drag this right on top of the star field. Now this can be a little intimidating when you first start playing around with it because there's so many different parameters you can tinker around with which almost makes your brain shut down because you don't know what you want to pick. You can change the fractal and noise type. There are a bunch of different options. You can change the contrast and brightness of the grayscale image. You can transform, scale it, change the sub settings, the complexity, and then the evolution to randomize it. One of the best ways to wrap your head around fractal noise is to simply use it in practice and try to create different things. Maybe create one thing and then branch out, create something a little bit different, and um, take a look at the different fractal types and noise types, and you'll be a lot more comfortable. Creating the star field is really simple. I'm gonna to go to the transformation properties and scale it down to five. And now as I bring the brightness down, you can see I start to get what looks like a bunch of stars. So I'm gonna bring this down to like negative 75. It's still not very bright. So to take care of that, I can simply duplicate the fractal noise effect. And then on the second fractal noise, I'll switch the blend mode to add, and that's gonna make it pop. Now, if I want, to make it even brighter, I can keep duplicating the second fractal noise, which is gonna keep applying that add blending mode, but I'm just gonna leave it here. I think this looks fine. Next, I wanna create the streaking star tunnel. So for that, I'm gonna go and create a new composition and I'm gonna make this square. Let's do 2,500 pixels by 2,500, call it star tunnel. Then I'm gonna do the same thing, go to layer, new solid, and I'll go grab another fractal noise here. Now for this one, I'm gonna bring the contrast up really, really high. We'll do something like 800, and I'll bring brightness down to negative 100. And I'm gonna open up the transform properties, and I'm gonna deselect uniform scaling. I'm gonna bring the width real low down to one, and I'll bring the scale really, really high up to 1400, and that gives us these nice lines. Now to turn this into like a circular tunnel shape, I'm gonna to go to distort, and here you have polar coordinates. I'm gonna drag that on top here. I'm gonna set the type of conversion to rectangular to polar, and now I can bring this up to 100%, which gives me this nice look here. Now, to actually bring this animation to life, I'm gonna go back to Fractal Noise, and I'm gonna add an expression to Evolution. If you remember, as I stated before, to randomize this, you can change the evolution. And if you look here, you can see, as I kind of twist this little controller around here you can see it moves a lot so I want it to move like really an insane amount so I'm gonna alt click this stopwatch button here that's gonna open up the expression editor down here and I'm gonna use the time variable and set that to multiply by like 2000 so the time expression is is gonna generate this animation you can see here now we got some cool movement now I'm gonna close out the pre comp and actually bring this comp and put it on top. So now I have this on top of the star field. And now I'm gonna go grab the ellipse tool here. And with my star tunnel comp selected, I'm gonna mask straight over the center here, something like that. I'm gonna set the mask to subtract. And then I'm gonna simply feather this out. Hit the F key and feather it way out. And the last step here, I need to change the blend mode of this layer with this comp to screen. And now I can see that star field through here. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, very cool. One of the most common uses of fractal noise inside of After Effects is to create these glitch animations. So in the next step, I'm gonna be using fractal noise 
as a displacement map and I'm going to use it to drive the animations of those glitch elements. And this is really perfect for this particular scenario where you have you know, a spaceship flying through space and it's shaking around and you have these HUD elements and I want them to be glitching continuously. I'm gonna grab the Star Channel and Starfield. These backgrounds are done. I'm gonna turn them off and bring them underneath these elements. I'm gonna go to Layer, New Solid and I'll call it Glitch Displacement Map Number One. And I'm gonna add a fractal noise to this. Now for this, since it's like a digital look, I wanna go kind of square with it. So down on Noise Type, I'll select Block. And I'm gonna bring the contrast up high to 500. And we'll bring the brightness down to, let's say, negative 50. I'm gonna open up the Transformation Properties. And I'm gonna deselect Uniform Scaling. And now I can bring the width um, we'll bring the width up really high to, let's say, 600. And I'll bring the height down way low to 25. So now it'll be more, um, you know, it's, it's more wide than high. Now I need to tell these layers to use this glitch as its displacement map. So I'm going to turn off the actual glitch displacement map layer. And I'm going to go over here and grab the displacement map effect. I feel like I'm saying displacement map a lot. And I'm going to drag this over the main HUD. So let's focus on this one first. Now, to actually have it uh, accept that source, I need to select it up here under, under the map layer. So I'll go select it, it's uh, layer number one, and I'll make sure that it's accepting the effects in the mask because the fractal noise is an effect. It's still not doing anything, and that's because we need to change the map behavior and stretch the map to fit. And now you can see it's being displaced by that blocky fractal. And it's not animated yet, but to change the amount of the glitch, I can adjust these two numbers here, max horizontal and max vertical displacement. So if you see, if I bring the horizontal up, it's gonna glitch out horizontally. If I bring the vertical up, it's gonna displace that way. Now to bring this to life, I can simply animate these numbers. And I don't want it to just glitch once or twice or just a few times. I want it glitching constantly throughout the entire 10 seconds of the animation because you know, like my spaceship is gonna be shaking around so I want those glitches to be throughout. So for that, I'm gonna use a random expression. So I'll alt click here and I'm gonna type in random and let's do something like eight and I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna do the same thing on vertical. And now you can see here, it's giving us a nice little glitch effect and that's just gonna carry out throughout the entirety of our 10 second animation. To keep things kind of dynamic and randomized, I'm gonna duplicate this glitch and let's make a glitch map number two, change the evolution a little bit. Now I'm gonna grab the main HUD and I'm gonna copy the displacement map and now let's put it on the planet. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it. However, now I'm gonna switch this to the displacement map two and I'm gonna press E twice to bring up those expressions. And I'm gonna turn the random way up high. So we're gonna bring it up way high to have this glitch out. Um, the planet's gonna be glitching out a lot more. So we're gonna do like 50 and 35 maybe. This is doing a nice horizontal glitch. And now I'll copy this and paste it on the target as well. And you know what, that's way too much for this target. I'm gonna bring this back down. All right, these glitches are looking good. Now let's start to bring everything together. I'm gonna turn the star tunnel background and the star field back on. And now let's start to blend some of this together. First, this planet, I can see the background. So I'm gonna grab the planet and set the blend mode to lighten, just to knock that out. And if you notice that this main hood over here is blending in a little bit, so I could you know, make a couple of changes here to make this pop more. First, maybe I could just change the color. Yeah, I grab a fill effect, drop it on main hood and maybe set it to something like yellow. Still looking pretty terrible. So I'm gonna focus on the star tunnel. So I'm gonna isolate the star tunnel. I think if I add a vignette here, it'll make those edges darker. So it'll make that HUD pop because the HUD is more on the edges. So I'll drop the vignette on the star tunnel and now I'm just gonna crank up and start to really tweak some of these effects here. I'll bring it way up and now I'm gonna bring the pin highlights up as well. And that's really given us kind of a cooler look. It's making it more faded out on the edges. But the problem is it's getting really pixelated. If you look really closely here, it's looking way pixelated. So I'm gonna go grab a radial blur, CC radial blur, drop it on the star tunnel. Um, I'm gonna crank the amount up to 15, but that's obviously not what I want. I don't want scratch, I want fading zoom. And that looks like it takes care of that. Yeah, much better. Now, I don't know if this is gonna take like a million years to render. I guess we'll find out. And I'm gonna grab the main HUD and bring the opacity maybe down to like 75. 
So the third thing I wanna do with the fractal noise here is to create a texture on this windshield. So let's say I have a windshield of this spaceship. To make it more realistic, I'm gonna add some grunge, basically some like smudges and some marks on it. So for this, let's go ahead and turn off the target and the main HUD just to look around. Now I'm gonna to go to layer and select new solid and we'll call this windshield. Grab the fractal noise. So first I'll create these horizontal lines, like maybe there's scratches or something on the glass. The default uh, fractal type and noise type are fine. I'm gonna go and adjust the contrast, set it to 145, bring the brightness to negative 80. Now I'm gonna go down to the transformation options and deselect uniform scaling, and I'll set width to 1200 and height to 40. So there I've got some nice lines. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and I wanna create some smudges with this one. So I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna go set fractal type to rocky and I'll set noise type to spline. I'll bring brightness down to negative 75. And now I got some smudges and I'll change the blend mode of this fractal to screen so then I can now see everything on the same layer. And I'm gonna actually add a Gaussian blur just to kind of keep it not so sharp. There we go. Now I can come down to the actual layer and set this to lighten. And you know what, I may want to even blur this out a little bit more and maybe even bring the opacity down to something like 75. All right, now it's time to bring this all together with a few final tweaks of the animations. First, I'm gonna grab the target and the planet and let's bring up their positions and let's say I wanna animate the planet. So I'm gonna grab the position of target and hold shift and pick whip it to the position of the planet. So that'll bring the target right over. Now I'll reposition the planet, or I'll res rescale the planet here. Let's scale it down. Something really small. And I'll scale the target down as well. I'm just gonna animate this planet. Let's bring it over here at the beginning. And then maybe at the end, it's all the way, you know, over here or something. So now I wanna add some camera shakes, you know, have the, like the, give the illusion that the ship is shaking and that the HUD is shaking. So I'm going to add the wiggle expression to some position parameters of different elements. And I'll kind of group some together to make it uh, shake at different amounts. For the planet, I'm gonna open up position and I'm gonna add an expression. Let's just add a wiggle. We'll have it wiggle a little bit. We'll set that to three and three. And I'm gonna copy that expression. And I kinda of wanna do the same thing for the main HUD here. We'll have that wiggle and we'll set the amplitude maybe a little bit higher to five. And then I'm gonna actually add a new camera. And so we'll give it some like simulated camera shake. And I only wanna turn on the 3D layers for the star tunnel and the star field. So I'll turn those on. And then I'm gonna to go to the point of interest of the camera. And I'm gonna add uh, another wiggle expression here. And we'll do something like five and eight. I'll probably have to come back and tweak some of these expressions just to get it exactly how I want it. And actually I want the windshield to stick to the position of the main HUD, so it really looks like that windshield is there. And now I think as the final, final step, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer, put it at the top here, and then I'm gonna go and grab optics compensation, and I'm gonna change the field of view here. Can we go negative? No, let me see, okay, this bends it back like that. Now let's just reverse the lens distortion, and that'll give me a little bit of bend there to everything. And now let's take a look at this. All right, so there you have it. That's Fractal Noise inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And as always, if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.